There's a Facebook post that went viral today, getting more than 50,000 shares. It features an image of the Confederate battle flag with the words, if this flag offends you, you need a history lesson. Now, it's true, people need a history lesson about that flag, but it's certainly not the lesson offered by the author of that Facebook post. First off, when the Confederate states seceded in 1861, they didn't adopt the flag we now associate with the Confederacy. The first official flag of the Confederacy was this, which resembled the American flag and had stars added as states left the Union. This flag we know today was initially the battle flag of one of the armies of the Confederacy, the Army of Northern Virginia, commanded, of course, by Robert E. Lee. Battle flag was incorporated in later versions of the official Confederate flag, including this one with the battle flag and a sea of white, which was literally dubbed the white man's flag by its creator. Think about that for a second. After the war ended in 1865, the Confederate flags were mostly put away, though they popped up occasionally at memorials and sporting events. And the battle flag was incorporated into the Mississippi state flag in 1894 as reconstruction was coming to a close. But for the most part, the battle flag itself was not prominently in use as a political symbol until 1948, more than 80 years after the war ended, when it resurfaced for a very specific reason. In opposition to Harry Truman's efforts to provide equality for African Americans, which included desegregation of the armed forces. At the 1948 Democratic National Convention, a coalition of segregationists, Southern Democrats, known as the Dixiecrats, rebelled against Truman and embraced the Confederate battle flag as their emblem of revolt, eventually holding their own convention where the battle flag served as their segregationist symbol and where South Carolina Governor Strom Thurmond was nominated for the presidency. And it's another effort on the part of the president to dominate the country by force and to put into effect these uncalled for and these damnable proposals he has recommended under the guise of so-called civil rights. And I tell you, the American people from one side or the other had, a, had better wake up and oppose such a program. Confederate battle flag was quickly embraced by the Ku Klux Klan and other racist organizations and became a primary symbol of opposition to the civil rights movement. In 1956, that's two years after Brown versus Board of Education decision to segregating schools, that's when Georgia incorporated the Confederate battle flag into its state flag, where it remained until 2001. It was five years later, in 1961, as those civil rights battles raged, that South Carolina hoisted the battle flag above its state capital. The notion that the Confederate battle flag is simply a symbol of Southern history and pride, somehow divorced from racism, is directly contradicted by its appropriation as the primary symbol of opposition to the civil rights movement. To claim otherwise is to ignore history, not to celebrate it. Joining me now, Derek Johnson, state president of the Mississippi State Conference, NAACP, who in 1991 was a plaintiff in the NAACP lawsuit against Mississippi over its state flag. Now, Mr. Johnson, uh, Mississippi is the lone flag uh, that actually has that battle flag embedded in it, in it. How did it get there? Well, it, it was a, a emblem of resistance. You had the Civil War, you had the period of Reconstruction, which only lasted about 10 years in Mississippi, and you had what was called the Redemption Period after 1876. And it was during the time, as you mentioned earlier, in 1884, uh, uh, that the state adopted a flag as one of the precursors of adopting a constitution in 1890, which codified racial segregation in the state of Mississippi. Uh, the question of whether or not the emblem that's in the state flag was a part of the Confederacy or not is a mute point. We know for a fact that the, the, the emblem that's in our state flag was used as a flag of terrorism. And that flag of terrorism, we can trace back throughout the 50s and the 60s as, as synonymous to a cross burning that the Klan would use. And it was seen by many uh, whites in the South as a symbol of pride and white supremacy, but on the other side, seen by African Americans in Mississippi and in the South as a signal of terrorism and, uh, and suppression. This is what's key to me, is that the flag bears most of its, its sort of semantic weight at moments of the most intense kind of polarization, often violence, right? So in the period as Reconstruction ends and the, quote, redeemers, the white supremacists, take back the reins of government, um, that's when that flag gets incorporated. That's when the flag gets incorporated in the state flag, again, in this period of tremendous violence and conflict around the civil rights movement. That's again when it achieves a prominence. It's only really achieving its its peak prominence in moments of racial conflict when there's a challenge to the kind of white supremacist order. 
Right. So, so for all of those who try to hold this up as a uh, symbol of heritage, hate should not be a part of anyone's heritage. And if you choose to do so under the First Amendment, you have the right to, to in your private venue, but it should not be a symbol of any uh, official governmental uh, uh, institution. Uh, in the state of Mississippi in 1991, uh, Aaron Henry, who was then the state president, led a group of individuals to file a lawsuit against the state of Mississippi because the emblem embedded in our state flag was and still is a symbol of hatred. Can you explain to me why? It seems around 2000, 2001, you had a sort of this issue really um, boiled up again. You had it in South Carolina and in Georgia and in Mississippi. What, what was it about that period? Why, why was that the, the, a period of uh, the last time this was kind of revisited? Well, if you take a look at that period, that was on the backdrop of of the redistricting cycle, 1991, we've mm -hmm. seen the largest change of African Americans being elected to office as a result of the Voting Rights Act and many of the Southern jurisdictions being covered under Section 5. Mm -hmm. by, uh, by the 2000s, you've seen another increase of African Americans asserting their ability to get elected to office and begin to raise substantive policy issues. But it was also this time that many of those African American leaders started raising the question of what the images and symbols that represent mm. the governmental bodies that all of us are uh, citizens of, and whether or not those images and symbols should continue to represent uh, the states and the uh, municipalities across the South. All right, Derek Johnson. Ms. Hey, YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russer. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.